The Fellowship of Guelphosaga continues with Bike Pride Month events and the mayor defending his title of biggest tool in town. The second week of Bike Pride Month featured events celebrating those who choose to identify as cyclists or pedestrians. The pedestrians took selfies on the Rainbow Crosswalk, whereas the cyclists watched the biggest tool in town competition. But the mayor gave up his title as biggest tool to upgrade his big mayor powers with a giant red Yimby button, thanks to the big blue orc. Can the elder elves find solutions to the housing crisis, and will the mayor use his new veto powers? The first week of Bike Pride Month celebrated riders who identified as vehicles with the car show, so the second week was for those who identify as cyclists or pedestrians. The self-identifying pedestrians took to the streets at the Rainbow Crosswalk with the Somerville family this weekend. Before taking selfies with masked children on the crosswalk, they had a moment of silence for those who recently died suddenly in their sleep. After their successful crosswalking, the pedestrians gathered at picnic tables with their community to enjoy ice cream and popsicles while wearing masks in the summer heat. For riders who identify as cyclists, as most do, the 10th annual Love Your Bike event welcomed everyone to St. Andrew's Church this weekend. A large crowd of cyclists gathered to watch the annual competition for the biggest tool in town. The usual candidates for biggest tool were there to flex their skills and compete at who could change a bike tire the fastest. Last year, the mayor was easily named the biggest tool in town, so Lloyd of the Longfields and Mike of the Shriners had to step up their game. Before the competition began, St. Andrew's Church had a moment of silence for those who recently died while cycling on the road. The mayor used this moment of silence to pray to the Big Blue Orc. He would gladly give up his title of biggest tool in town to achieve victory over nimbyism. Before the competition began, the mayor devised a plan to take a dive for achieving his larger aspirations. Wearing his favorite cycling shirt, which is a t-shirt with a picture of a bike on it, the mayor and Mike of the Shriners did their best to not get grease on their pants. Lloyd of the Longfields wore a big red shirt and brought his red bike pump as the Lord of the Liberals mandated in the party rules. The biggest tool in town competition began when Grandpa found his phone and the three top tool candidates grabbed their bike tiles and tubes. The mayor took an early lead by realizing but that both items were circular, whereas Mike had to take a knee since he got distracted by climate change. At the one minute mark in the competition, both Lloyd and the mayor had replaced their tires and were on to pumping it up. Using the Big Blue Orc's one-arm method, Lloyd of the Longfields caught up to the mayor as they both raised their greasy hands in victory with a time of 68 seconds. It was a tie. But the tied outcome was exactly what the mayor had devised as he held out for larger aspirations with his left hand. He intentionally slowed down to match Lloyd's slow pace for blowing hot air and then kept his bike pump tube attached with his left hand so that he lost on a technicality. The grandpa judging the competition agreed with the technicality and so Lloyd of the Longfields earned the title of biggest tool in town. He was awarded a gift of bike related products, but once he realized he didn't want any of it, Lloyd took the opportunity to donate it to the community draw. The cycling community gladly accepted the donation since the total number of households reliant on Ontario Works for larger than five years has increased by 21% since 2019, and the share of the Shire's residents seeking employment is at the highest point since 2017. After Lord of the Longfield successfully dethroned the mayor for being the biggest tool in town, the cyclists gathered at picnic tables at the Woolly Pub to enjoy burgers and beer in the summer heat. The mayor returned home to relax with a grin on his face after executing his plan perfectly. After just resting his eyes for a couple of minutes, he fell asleep on the couch from the extensive workout of pumping up a bike tire. The mayor dreamed of his recent Guelph Chamber of Commerce awards and how he wished he had been awarded with a giant red NIMBY button to fight against NIMBYism with his Orcus pals. 
But when the mayor woke up the next morning, his wishes were granted by the Big Blue Orc. As a reward for his ritual sacrifice of his title of biggest tool in town, the Big Blue Orc gave the mayor a giant red Yimby button. Yimby, 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 shouted the mayor as he realized his dreams had come true with the strong mayor powers. The new powers allowed the mayor to veto council-approved bylaws, create committees and decide who leads them, hire senior city staff, reorganize municipal departments, and more. The news of the mayor's new powers quickly spread across the Shire as the elder elves dealt with the looming threat. If the mayor uses his new red Yimby button, it would instantly transform a random elder on the council into a creature of the province. Carly of Classen and the Elder Elves can't take the risk of losing their elven hair and are fighting back before the Shire's democracy dies with a giant red Yimby button. The Shire's inhabitants have joined the battle against the Mayor's strong powers. Chatter has already begun among the apes of Reddit and the trolls on Twitter about the situation. Even the cyclists and pedestrians have teamed up to address the housing cost crisis. The mayor attempted to go quiet on Twitter, similar to Bud Light, but eventually he had to write a short statement three days later. In the statement, he echoed the Association and Municipality of Ontario's opinion that the strong mayor's power can help increase the pace of growing the housing supply. The housing cost crisis is a pricing issue, so committing to a supply side quantity solution is a very indirect way of addressing the problem and is unlikely to work in a market failure. If only the mayor had the powers to directly decrease the cost of housing, such as cutting real estate taxes in the Shire, then he could use his strong mayor powers to fight the housing cost crisis directly. A $13.7 million operating surplus would sure help with that. But for now, the mayor is sweating more than someone trying to eat ice cream with a mask on. Can the Elder Elves do anything to avoid turning into creatures of the province? And will the Shire's democracy die when the mayor pushes his giant Randy Yimby button? Stay tuned here to see.